In this video, I will show you how to convert an image into an embroidery file. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Darcy from Z Digitizing. Before we continue, guys, please make sure to subscribe to this channel for any upcoming videos. What is a DST file? A DST file is a format of an embroidery machine which stores the embroidery commands of machine functions. All those commands are a set of instructions that are used by an embroidery machine. An embroidery digitizer can generate the DST file. Requirements, embroidery software, a little skill of computer operations, a little bit of your own effort, download artwork file, image file manipulation for embroidery work. Number one, place artwork file inside the program. First, you will have to insert the image file into the software. So by doing this, you will be able to convert the image into an embroidery file for other tasks. Go to the top menu bar, hover over your mouse on the image and select the inset image file. Make sure you have selected all file options when you're finding your file. Select the image file that you have downloaded in the requirements section to start digitizing for embroidery work. I assume that you have successfully placed an image file like this. Number two, crop the image file before going further. It's better to set the desired size early in the working process instead of later on. So first we will crop the picture before going ahead. Go to the image section in the top menu bar, hover the mouse and select the cropped bitmap with the polygon tool. Select a particular area of the picture by making a drawing with a polygon tool. The file successfully has been cropped according to our selection. Number three, set the desired size of the picture. Now it's time to set the size of the file. This would be the embroidery design size, so let's begin. Change metrics to US. By doing this, you will be able to enter your design size into inches instead of millimeters. Unlock the lock icon if you want to change the file size separately in width and height. If not, then leave it in locked status. Enter your length in the height and width field. Remember, it should be in inches instead of millimeters. Number four, lock the picture before converting an image to an embroidery shape. I don't want to do anything else with this picture, so it will be better to lock this. By locking the picture file, you are making it secure from unexpected changes. For lock status, select the file and press K. Photo will be locked. For unlocking, press the Shift plus K. Additional resources. These are the main factors that are used during digitization. The letter M is used for object measurement. The letter Z is used for zoom in. Letter Shift plus Z used for zoom out. Maximum satin stitch length 12.1 millimeters. Maximum fill slash tatami stitch length, four millimeters. Maximum jump, seven millimeters. Start logo digitizing for embroidery. Number one, changing the measurement option. Again, change the measurement option. By doing this, metrics will give you extra control on design size because US shows measurement in inches, which may be extra hard to measure the miniature objects. Number two, measure the object at the beginning. Before starting digitized embroidery work, it's compulsory to measure the object at the beginning of the work. By doing this, you can check the object size and then analyze which stitch will be suitable for this object. As I mentioned earlier, different stitches also differ in stitch length. So by pressing the M key on the keyboard, you can measure the object. Number three, first of all, start embroidery digitizing to ring objects from the picture. By default, a satin stitch is selected, so no need to change it. Select the ring tool from the menu bar, press and hold left mouse click at the center from the sequin slash ring and drag it to the point of the circumference. It will draw the height of the circle circumference. Again, you have to click on the circumference point and this will draw the circle width. At the third and fourth steps, you will draw inner circle height and width. Just drag your mouse at the internal circle circumference point and then click. This will draw the inner circle height. In the last step, do the same action as you have done in the second step for the outer circle. 
Just dragging your mouse over the inner circle circumference point will draw the width of the inner circle. Number four, change the colors of the embroidery objects. It is the color bar where you can choose specific colors. It will exist at the bottom of the design view screen. First, you have to select the object where you want to apply the color. Then from the bottom of the color bar, select your desired color. It will be applied automatically to that object. You can do this process for a single object or whole design at once. Number five, be familiarized with the copy and paste function. Short keys, left mouse click for object copying, T for design accurate view, S to hide the design stitches or go to wireframing view. If you want to hide or view stitches of the design, you can do this using the given short keys. Number six, our second target is thread con. Select the circle tool from the left sidebar menu where you selected the ring tool. Other tools will be displayed by pressing and holding the mouse left click and aligning your mouse cursor at the thread con. Your mouse cursor should be at the center point of the yellow colored thread con object. Press the left mouse click and drag it at the circle circumference. By doing this, a circle will be drawn and automatically will be converted into an embroidery shape. But there is an issue you may have noticed or not. The main thing is that the size of the circle is bigger than our satin stitch length. So we can't digitize it into a satin stitch. If we want it to be clear and fine, then we have to convert it into tatami or fill a stitch embroidery file. Number seven, repeat the copy and pasting function. Whenever you see there are two or more identical objects in the picture, then it would be much better to digitize only one thing more efficiently instead of one by one separately. So in our picture, ThreadCon has two same objects. We have successfully converted an image into an embroidery file shape. Now we need to copy and paste that object that we have converted into embroidery form. The procedure is the same as we have done before. Right click on the completed part of the picture, press control and drag it to the identical picture. Number eight, repeat the color change step. The procedure of the color change process is also the same as we have done already in the previous step. Number nine, sketching thread con. Pick up the right tool for the correct object. For thread con, we are going to use the input A tool. Just hover over your mouse on the left and select the tool. After tool selection, punch it according to your picture as we have done in the previous chapter. The procedure is the same as image cropping. When you have drawn your thread con, then the next step will be a color change. I am sure you know how to change the color. Change the stitch type if your default stitch type is satin, because due to object size, we can't apply satin stitch type. Therefore, we have to change it to tatami stitch type. For this process, select your object first and then fill stitch from the top stitch bar menu. Your top and bottom of the thread con will be behind a recently digitized object. For this, just cut and paste your file objects which are behind the thread con. After completion of this step, your picture should look like this. Number 10, let's start working on pins. You know pins are in blue and the procedure will be the same as we have applied on other objects. First, we need to punch needle shapes in pins. For this, we will use a tool. The use of this tool you already know about. So the next step will be to draw a circle, the same as the top and bottom shape of the thread. Number 11, converting needle shape into machine embroidery form. The process is so simple. Use an input tool to draw a needle line and finally draw a needle hole. If the upper shape is big enough, then cut the shape from the main object. Otherwise, make a little shape on the upper part of the main object. Number 12, finally giving the embroidery shape to simple thread lines on a picture using triple run. Pick up the triple run tool right from the bottom of the input tool. Press the left mouse click and hold on to it for a little while. After a moment, other tools will be shown. Select a required tool from the given option and start working on it. Begin from the start point and act just like a drawing straight line with nodes. 
Keep overlapping and draw the bottom object first and upper later on. And lastly, change the color as you have done on other objects. This whole process is also called converting JPEG or PNG to a DST embroidery file. A final look at our design will be as applying additional settings for final work. For finalization, we have to do some extra settings before sending the project to the machine. What do we have to do? These are the additional settings that we are going to apply to our project, such as Florentine effect to thread con, stitch density, trims, etc. Let's follow the steps. Number one, applying Florentine effect on thread con. Number two, adding underlay to the bottom of the objects. Number three, travel the design. Do you need digitizing service for your embroidery machine with super fast turnaround and excellent quality? Just click the link below and get a free quote in less than five minutes. Hope it will be helpful for you guys. If there's any questions related to this video, you can simply ask in the comment section. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And finally, let's go watch